Symbols. Man, they're everywhere. On road signs, logos, phones. Ever wondered where all these universal signs come from? Well, let's unravel the mystery behind all these symbols from the Bluetooth sign to the heart emoji. How many times have you struggled to plug in a USB, flipping it over and over again? Total struggle, right? But what does the circle, square, and triangle really mean? The USB symbol was actually inspired by the Dryzak. You know, Poseidon's trident. The three shapes of the trident's points are there to show the different peripherals you can connect with a universal serial bus, aka USB. It's all about showing off the tech power of USBs, connecting all sorts of devices. The ampersand. Surely you recognize it from brands such as M&M's and H&M. It's the easiest way to abbreviate the word and. This symbol's story started in ancient Rome, where Latin was the language of the peeps. To them, and was like the French a. Over the years, it evolved into the ampersand, likely to save room in the pages of super long letters. Toyota's logo. Man, it's simple, easy to spot, but kind of puzzling, right? I mean, cars have four wheels, but the logo's got three circles. Turns out it was picked way back in 1936 and wasn't cooked up in-house. Nope, it won in a logo design contest. And those circles? They're not just random. You can actually split them up to spell out T-O-Y-O-T-A. Pretty clever, huh? I'd probably make it the winner as well. Why the heck do we call that bumpy upside-down triangle a heart shape? It goes way, way back, like several hundred years BCE. Back then, there was this plant called Silphium. It had these heart-shaped seeds, and the ancient Greeks were nuts about it. They even slapped it on some of their coins. Oh, and get this. It was a contraceptive plant, so that's how it got associated with love. Cute. So have you ever noticed how those radiation symbols look like they belong in some abstract art museum? It's crazy that it's actually a heads up about serious radioactivity nearby. It was doodled up by some Berkeley researchers back in 46. Started off as magenta on blue, then went magenta and yellow, before settling on black and yellow for better visibility. The symbol itself? Supposed to show radioactivity busting out of an atom. Pretty rad, huh? Now, on to the biohazard symbol. Looks like something out of a dark, artsy ink blot test, doesn't it? Simple enough, though. A circle sliced up by three squiggly black lines that taper off towards the edge. Created by Dow Chemical folks in 66, following a bunch of rules to keep it low-key but recognizable. It's supposed to show a nasty agent messing up a living organism. Makes sense when you think about it. Ah, Hyundai. Pumping out affordable rides like nobody's business. Their logo is pretty straightforward, right? It's an italicized H in a circle. But don't tell Hyundai that it's basic. According to them, it's more than just an H. It's supposed to look like two folks shaking hands seen from the side. Check out this little pic if you're struggling to see it. They say it's all about prosperity and the good vibes Hyundai shares with its customers. Cool, huh? Bluetooth, man. It's like magic. The symbol looks like a fancy letter B, huh? But there's more to it. Turns out it's got some roots in Nordic ruins. Back then, runes were etched into stone or wood, mostly using straight lines. The Bluetooth symbol is what they call a bind rune, combining two runes. They're the Viking versions of the letters B and H, giving a nod to a legendary king named Harold Bluetooth. The crown has always been the ultimate power symbol of the top dog. But why does a fancy ring around your head mean you get to call the shots? One theory ties it back to Christianity, where angels often rock halos. Since many kings claim to rule by divine right, 
the crown could have picked up some holy vibes. But nah, that theory doesn't quite cut it. Crowns have been around way before Christianity, starting with diadems worn by ancient Greek deities. We'll never know. Let's talk thumbs up. Usually, it's a sign of approval, right? But why? Well, it might be a throwback to the gladiatorial fights in ancient Rome. There's still some debate about that among historians. When one warrior was dominating the other, they turned to the VIP in the audience, whether it was a city official or the Roman emperor himself. That VIP would then give a thumbs up to decide the loser's fate. Thumbs up might sound like a good job signal, but back then, it meant it's time to shuffle off this mortal coil. Yin-yang symbols have been around since the 14th century BCE. They're like the poster child for Taoism, representing the balance between opposing forces. Each side's got a bit of the other, symbolizing all sorts of deep stuff like morality and spirituality. But get this, the symbol's roots are surprisingly literal. Yin means the dark side of the mountain, and yang means the light side. So picture this. The symbol's like a bird's eye view of a mountaintop. Trippy, right? Do you love pies? Nope, not those desserts with yummy filling, but pies from your 10th grade math class? Pie's that magic number, roughly 3.141, that helps us figure out circle areas and stuff. Archimedes of Syracuse gets the credit for discovering it around 250 BCE but he didn't give it that symbol. Nope, that was William Jones. He went with the first Greek letter of the word, perimeter, which is what he was using pi for. We're used to seeing crosses all around, but usually we see this type of cross, the two straight lines intersecting with each other. Yep, that one that got pretty famous thanks to Christianity. But there's a more ancient symbol of a cross, that fewer know is even a cross, the Ankh. This ancient Egyptian symbol is called the Key of Life, and it's known to represent immortality. You can find it a lot in ancient Egyptian sacred texts and drawings, or in hype necklaces nowadays. Your pick. The Staff of Hermes or Mercury is the go-to symbol for a bunch of health organizations. But here's the kicker. Hermes wasn't a healer. Nah, he was more into thieving. But back in ancient Greece around 1200 BCE, there was this dude named Asclepius, a genius doc. His trademark was a long wooden staff with a snake wrapped around it. Fast forward a few millennia, and some officer from the US Army Medical Corps mixed up the two symbols. Oops. Ah, the I'm alright symbol might land you in hot water in certain places, believe it or not. But did you know it's actually a sacred symbol in Buddhism and Hinduism? It's called a mudra, specifically the mudra of discussion. It's not just about signaling you're okay. It's about transmitting the wisdom of Buddha to those who are open to learning about his teachings. Pretty deep, right? I'm not sure we should keep throwing it around like we do anymore. The lightning bolt never has something signified so much with so little. This could easily reference the Power Rangers, Flash, a charging station for your phone, and the wrath of Zeus. This symbol is one of the oldest and most recognized in human history. Its origin might be as old as humankind itself. Cavemen and Neanderthals scratched them in caves. It's got representations on Norse, Roman, Greek, and Native American civilizations. It basically means fear of fire coming down from the sky. You've probably seen tons of tattoos with this symbol, the Eye of Horus. What you probably didn't know is that it's meant to signify good health and restoration. You see, Horus was an ancient Egyptian deity. He got into a fight with Set, another deity, and lost his left eye. Hathor, an almighty feminine deity, magically restored his eye. Since then, this symbol has meant wholesome health and integration. 
The McDonald's symbol is probably one of the most famous worldwide. Clearly, it's a stylized letter M, but it was designed to represent two golden arches, like you're entering some pretty darn special kingdom. Yikes! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.